Uh, Cecilio Barroso was not able I mean, to come, and he apologizes. Um, but we would like to thank the organizer, and in particular Jean-Jacques Hublin, who knows the site very well, uh, for this opportunity to present the site of uh, Safarel. <coughs> Uh, the site of Safaraya is uh, located in southern Spain in the, in the boundary of the province of Malaga and Granada, 25 kilometers from the sea at an altitude of uh, 1,022 meters. Uh, it was discovered in 1979 by Cecilio and uh, he undertook eight excavation campaigns from 81, 83 to 1994. Most of the Neanderthal human remains were discovered in the campaigns of 1992 and 1993. And so, uh, with abundant Mousterian lithic assemblage and rich uh, faunal assembly. The material that was, uh, that was discovered has been the, the, the subject of two extensive monographs uh, covering uh, multidisciplinary aspects of this important uh, site. Uh, there was a monograph published in 2003 in Spanish, and uh, there was another one uh, published in 2006 um, in French. Um, Cecilio, in, uh, 1900, in, 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 19, in 1987, uh, was invited by Henri de Lomelay to read his thesis in Paris at the, in the Département de Préhistoire of the Natural History Museum. So he spent two years, uh, leave of absence from his uh, work in Spain, and he was able I mean, to mobilize uh, lots of uh, researchers that uh, undertook lots of uh, studies. Uh, and that the result of all this effort was, uh, was the monograph, which uh, basically was contributed by 70 authors with uh, 38 papers uh, and uh, three uh, volumes that cover 1,743 pages with subject covering uh, geology, geomorphology, uh, stratigraphic studies, sedimentology, geochronology, micromorphology, flora and fauna studies, human paleontological studies, and living industry. So the, the cave is located in a, in a, in a very uh, steep uh, escarpment that we can see here is number one. Is there, is there a pointer? No? Yes. 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 So the cave is, is located in a very steep escarpment, uh, overlooking some st steep slopes that go down to the sea. And behind the, the cave, we, there is a, a, what we call the polio, which, which is a, a sedimentary basin where probably a lot of the uh, fauna, herbivores, uh, roamed uh, in Neanderthal uh, times. The cave uh, was excavated here in the entrance, <coughs> the Sala de Entrada, where most of the human remains were found, and was excavated also uh, after going through a narrow passage into the Sala del Fondo, and also at the end here. The stratigraphy that was excavated uh, represent about 1.5 meters uh, of depth. And, and the rectangle here shows the units where the human remains uh, were found. The human remains include this famous uh, man mandible, uh, Safaria II, a femur, uh, and, and, and those, this partial uh, mandible, burnt, and some long bones that uh, were found in the hearth that was uh, discovered, and some cut marks, and the fact that some of the human bones were burnt, I mean, basically shows that, in fact, there were uh, examples of cannibalism in Safaraya. The phylogenetic affinity of, of the mandible is rather interesting. This is the result of a study done by Aurélien Mounier, which shows that the mandible is, is, uh, has more affinities with the uh, Middle East uh, uh, Neanderthal than the classical Neanderthal, and, and that uh, sh sh confirms a hypothesis from some Spanish workers like Antonio Rosas saying that they might be a uh, uh, Mediterranean gradient of uh, Neanderthals. Uh, this is an example of the tools that were found. 
which is typical Mousterian with a substantial proportion of Levallois uh, 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 flakes. The fauna is dominated by Capra Pirenaica, which represents 75% of the ensemble, with a substantial presence of carnivores of Kuon and Pantera. So the last Neanderthal paradigm was basically contributed by Safaraya. Uh, this paradigm basically said that, uh, that uh, uh, the Neanderthal took refuge in southern Spain in light of the invasion and colonization of Europe by the modern human and then disappeared or went extinct. Um, this was based on a paper that uh, was published by Cecilio uh, based on the biostratigraphy uh, of the site. And, and it was further confirmed by some C14 and UTH uh, dating that was conducted with the help of Jean-Jacques Hublin, which showed that uh, the C14 uh, date ranged between 30,000 and 32,000 uh, years, uh, and the UTH ranged from 25 to, uh, to uh, 34,000. As part of the, uh, his thesis, and having mobilized a lot of resources, uh, some more uh, dating was undertaken. Um, here we have some, some uh, more C14 dating that was done, uh, which basically more or less confirms the dates of 1995. They also dated charcoal, and there there was a, a bit of a problem because uh, some of them were inconsistent, probably due to contamination, and some other kind of uh, coincided with the range that uh, that was between uh, thirty-four and forty-two thousand year BP. The uranium thorium uh, result were very dispersed, so were were not uh, diagnostics. Probably because of the open system that the, that the cave represents, and the ESR date gave between twenty three thousand and forty three thousand. Uh, Michel, so, so basically, the, the the range that was proposed that came out from those uh, dates was between thirty four and forty two thousand years. Um, Michel published a paper in 2013 which he did some additional uh, dating of, uh, of, of uh, charcoal that came out um, at about uh, 40,000, between 39 and 43,000 years. These were dates that were calibrated. And she, she did also some more ESR and UTH. And, and the range basically was between 33,000 and 43. In 2009, Rachel Wood from the C14 lab approached us and asked us, as part of her PhD, uh, to date, redate the site uh, with a new protocol of ultrafiltration. We accepted uh, and gave her uh, 30 samples. Uh, of fauna that were in connection with the mandible. And this illustrates, I mean, the impact of a 2% uh, contamination of modern uh, uh, carbon into the result of, uh, and, and as we go further, you know, uh, to the limit of the method, I mean, the error becomes uh, very large. So the results of her thesis were published in a, in a paper in PNAS, um, and, and uh, out of uh, 11 sites that she tried to sample, she got uh, collagen from two sites, Harama and Safaraya. The results in Safaraya were interesting because she was able I mean, to redate a sample that had been dated before to, to 33,300, and when she redated it with the ultra filtration protocol, she, uh, she got 46,700, which illustrated, I mean, the impact uh, that, the, that uh, contamination, modern contamination might have uh, on a sample. The other two, the other two, uh, the other two samples gave, one uh, was at, uh, the limit of the method, and the other one gave 46,300. So these dates from Rachel basically confirmed that uh, that cast in doubt, you know, the, the, the last Neanderthal paradigm that Safaria uh, represented, which we accepted uh, willingly. That's the way the, the game goes. 
Now, who then is the <laughs> might uh, is the evidence for uh, further uh, for this paradigm of the last Neanderthal? I mean, in 2006, there was a paper published in Nature by Clive Finlayson uh, that set the world on fire with new evidence that the last Neanderthal uh, survived in in, uh, in Goran Cave in, in Gibraltar. Uh, this is a, a picture that we can see uh, very often of Gorm caves with a skull. Uh, what happens, in fact, is that this skull is the skull of Forbes Quarry. It has nothing to do with Gorm Cave. And as a matter of fact, no Neanderthal remains have to date uh, been found in, in Gorm's cave. And, and we have not to make it clear because we talk a lot about the Neanderthal of Gorm Cave. No human Neanderthal remains have been found there. So there is Mousterian, but no Neanderthal. In the paper, uh, this statement basically summarizes a bit their, their, conclusion, their conclusion. Thus, three uh, samples, 16, 17, and 20, came from in situ Mousterian superimposed hearth. These three dates provide a stratigraphic sequence from 24,000 to 30,500. Taken together, all the dates show that Neanderthal occupied the site until 28,000 and possibly as recently 24,000. I mean, here are the three samples that they used. Now, in the paper, there is a list with all the dates of all the other samples. Now, if you, if you put the other sample, uh, you can see that, for example, sample 11, which is above uh, 16 and, and 17, is older, uh, whereas 23 is younger. Furthermore, if you go to the left, you have here sample 12 at this level, which is 31,000, another one 23,000. So, so basically what this shows is that the dispersion of date is clear evidence of stratigraphic charcoal sample mobility. Um, another statement that was made in the paper is that the boundary between level 3 and 4, 4 is the level where they found the mysteria, is sharp and clear. And this is the figure that came in the, in the, in the paper. This is a picture that was, uh, that was published in, uh, in, in the other day in, in, in the site of, of Gibraltar, which shows that, in fact, there is no clear boundary uh, between level 4 and level 3, which shows uh, basically that there is uh, bioturbation between those two levels. So there, there were several, lots of criticism uh, of the paper. The first one starting with Zilao, which probably is this time right, uh, showing that the stratigraphy sequence is problematic. There was another paper from uh, Marco de la Garcia, who's the, 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 the guy who excavated uh, El Cidron, who basically made two points that there is a contradiction between the Mustern levels in the back of the cave that are, which are contemporaneous with the upper paralytic presence in the entrance. And the other point they make is that there is no proof of the association of the samples with the lithic artifacts. But the main criticism is the one that comes from Tom Ham, uh, which is in, in the monograph that was published on, on, on the, the Gibraltar caves, and including Goran caves. And, and Tom basically indicates that the wide range of radiocarbon ages, many of which originate from a single hearth feature, is a serious cause of concern. And he further goes on saying that the sedimentary studies refer frequently to the presence of bioturbated features. This probably explains the majority of the aberrant results obtained. Thus, for Goran Cave, there is a need to do more dating. They could use uh, uranium thorium, uh, OSL, uh, ESR, given that the present dates uh, are very questionable. Now, uh, Rachel Wood, in the paper that she published, uh, at the end of the uh, abstract, she says the following. There is evidence for the late survival of Neanderthal in southern Iberia, which is limited to one possible site, Cueva Anton. A radiocarbon date on charcoal suggests that the unit probably formed shortly after 38.5. Cueva Anton um, was excavated in 19... 91, um, by uh, Consuelo Martinez Sanchez. And uh, in fact, there is evidence that there was Mousterian uh, here. But the, the, uh, the dating of the, of the sample was at the top of the sequence. Furthermore, there was another paper that was published that put in doubt I mean, the, the, the geology and, and the, and the, and the and of, 
of the, of the site. Furthermore, there was some OSL that was published, which also puts in doubt the, 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 the date. So as far as uh, current, on, there are no neanderthal remains that have been found. The date of charcoal is not functionally related to the small lithic assemblage. The lithic assemblage of 2000 has not yet been fully published, and it is doubtful that it is related to Mysteria. And the alluvial the dynamics leading to the accumulation of sediments and components exotic to the local geological context puts in doubt the integrity of the sampling. Furthermore, the OS cell chronology invalidates the C14 date. So the paradigm of 2006 uh, is dead. The new paradigm is the paradigm that basically uh, has been proposed by, by Tom Haim as a result of, uh, of uh, the dating of, uh, of 40 sites. Um, and basically, the conclusion of uh, his uh, uh, impressive uh, study is that the Mousteri and the Neanderthal disappeared between 40,000 and 42,000 years ago. So we are undertaking further dating with the uh, Tom Hyam team. Uh, we are going to use OSL, uh, and we are going to try to, to date the top of the sequence, not only the whole sequence. Uh, we believe that fossils are needed to resolve the issue of the late survival of Neanderthal in southern Spain, and lithic evidence is not sufficient to support their presence or disappearance. Here are a few, features, a few pictures of, that we took this summer, a sampling by OSL with uh, Marine Foin and Thibaut Devise. These are the samples in the Sala de Entrada and the samples in the, in the, uh, in the Sala del Fondo. This is the view from the cave. Uh, we, we have here the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and there's here a horizontal line, which is the Rift Mountains of Morocco. Thank you very much. <coughs>